the teacher's retirement system jumped up to 16.25%, which is a 4.4% increase from the prior year. And that increase in the budget is $4,765,000 just for the retirement system. The other large piece of this is the medical insurance. We're going to experience, we believe it's going to be around 8.9 to 9.5% uh, increase on the health insurance premiums. So on the current budget of $35.8 million, that we're looking at $2.9 million increase to the budget. So they, that along with the charter school tuition makes up the bulk of the, the number, that, the target that you're going to be looking for. The word target and bold, that's the number you would need to reduce the budget. It's $9,839,000. That is considered your budget gap. The cut $9,800,000 mm -hmm. and use $2 million out of the fund balance. And, we're still right. and it's at 6.13 increase to the tax levy. That's your, that's your tax levy. We've identified three elementary schools strictly based on their enrollment, one in each of the municipalities. There's been no recommendation on which one. I'm sure everyone has heard rumors that their school is closing. There has been no determination and no discussion over any school closing. We've also looked at the other large chunk that's been brought to you in prior years. It's going uh, to a half-day kindergarten program from a full-day program. Now, both of these are significant numbers. The switch to a half-day program in kindergarten would cause a reduction of about three and a half million dollars, and the closing of an elementary school could range between five and six million dollars. <coughs> the three, you know, should be no surprise. And even with those two drastic things, we're still short. Yes, and especially if you add back your seven hundred thousand security. Ask for some additional information from central administration uh, on the two issues of closing of an elementary school and reducing kindergarten <coughs> to a half-day program. What I would like to see about the elementary school would be the effect that would be felt around the district on class size. <coughs> because even though it says here that the selection uh, of the potential schools is being based on, on enrollment, no, uh, it's it's the the enrollment that would be then, yeah, resulting. No, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, just like right. the articles we've been reading about Marlboro going from twenty to thirty kids in a classroom. Well, what would happen in Newburgh? Right. To me, that is information that you need before you go forward with the conversation. Well, we we've done that. We looked at. Oh, you didn't give me that. You no, know, because we didn't want to put out. We didn't want to put out our any recommendations. But Mr. Jensen can certainly rely, or certainly answer your question because he has done some, some analysis on at least two of the schools. Yeah, we, we, you are familiar with the concept of the scoreboard that we put out. And basically, what we did was we tried to put out our best projection on one or two. I can't remember if we did the second one completely. But uh, we could present one with all three and what the effects would be. But obviously, the smaller your, your uh, school, the less effect it would have on the other schools. Okay. So you have three three schools that have been presented, and, and basically you know that each one, depending on which one you do, is going to have a, a, a rising or a diminishing effect on the class size of the other range. Right. You, you, you review the ranges. What are the ranges of the class sizes? The ranges of the class sizes are in the high 20s to low 30s. You have 4.4 million left in fund balance. Two million of that is what you appropriate each year. So two million of that should come off the top or you have to find another two million dollars worth of cuts. So I'm assuming that you're going to appropriate two million of that 4.4, that leaves you 2.4 million left for okay. anything that can happen. So, right, so, right. 